Hi, my name is Jaslyn. I'm from Citibank Singapore. I manage client marketing, digital and content strategy, MarTech, AgTech, as well as sales optimization in Citibank Singapore. To me, Brave is essentially making that first bold move that nobody's making at the moment. Even if it seems quite intimidating at the moment, even if it seems unpopular, but simply because it is the right thing to do for your customers and your employees, and then standing by that decision no matter how hard it gets. Content is the equivalent of your voice in the market from a branding perspective. And because consumers nowadays are getting more and more cynical about quick fix promotions, tactical sales, brands need to go beyond high level branding advertisements as well as tactical promotions to bring that voice into the market via consideration, via content, establishing a niche and a voice for yourself in the market so that you can nurture and engage and sharpen your targeting as well as your client retention and acquisition strategies. Firstly, we need to take a step back. We need to look at your entire MarTech, your tech stack, how it fits together, what is missing, what's working, what's broken from a customer perspective, from a journey perspective. And then when you have that in place, you identify the gaps and then you, you know, look at whether you need to build versus you need to buy. What, what is more cost efficient, what is more sustainable in terms of the solution from a business perspective. And then make sure as well you have the right governance and data protection policies in place and ensure that there is ethical or treat customers fairly processes and policies before you even try to implement the AI or ML in question. When we talk about suitable spaces, I think we're talking about media channels. We're also talking about suppliers, media partners, and even the social influences that we work with. So typically, I know media agencies tend to have these types of recommendations. But I think marketers need to also do our own groundwork and our own homework, do our own validity and fact-checking as well. Make sure that whoever that we're working with actually stands true to their own personal beliefs that ultimately resonates with your own corporate branding values as well. And then be prepared to, of course, drop them or stop working with them if they no longer believe in the same values that you withhold because customers can pick that up very quickly and you can lose them very quickly just as well. So stand by your decision similarly if there is something that doesn't work and then make sure that you stand by and stay true to your decision for the sake of your customers. So I think firstly, brands need to look at it from a holistic omni-channel strategy. So typically, I think B2B, they tend to look at LinkedIn first and foremost when we talk about ABM or content marketing. But I think they need to look at it from a holistic media and omni-channel strategy. Make sure that you're looking at beyond just LinkedIn. Look at even alternative platforms, things like even Facebook, YouTube, or even connected TVs, you know, programmatic advertising on Google, and also look at your client events. See how you can actually turn those around to work in your favor. But what is more important is that it needs to deliver the consistent message that you want to deliver to your target customers and prospects. Secondly, is also look at different content formats, messaging based on your target audience because ultimately your audience is a person at the end of the day, you're not talking to a company that sits behind a CEO, a middle office manager, they have their own pain points. So make sure that whatever content you're pushing out addresses each of their pain points in a different way. We are looking at a very personal-led approach right now. Basically, we segregate them into three main streams. We call them the aspirers, builders, as well as achievers. And they are sitting in different life stages. So for example, aspirers, they are people who are fresh out from university or school, starting into work. So they are looking to build their career, looking to build a family, looking to build their wealth. 
And then we have the builders. So they are like the mid-career. Very likely they have settled into a marriage or they've settled into a mid-stage career. They're quite comfortable, but they're looking to retire. Then the final stage is actually the achiever. The people who have been there, done that, they're ready to just like kick off, kick back, and then just relax and think about legacy planning and planning for the next generation, or maybe just even migrating. So based on that, we look at the different types of offers, different type of content that would suit their needs, and then we deliver them through different platforms and different media channels that they are consuming content on. I think it's a great uh, summit. There are a lot of expert speakers and there are very dedicated, specialised, curated topics. And secondly, I think it gives senior and mid-level managers a great opportunity to network and know each other and then learn something new at the same time.